But uh, anyway, uh, I did go that third year. And uh, it was when it was the bad weather, though, the people around Heath would always insist on the ones that lived at a distance uh, stay there. And, and, and we did. You know, often, when it's too bad to, to get home, we wouldn't stay any place, stay there. Now, how long would it take you to make that trip on good days? How long would it take you to make that trip? Oh, it uh, it, uh, it took more than an hour. I, I've forgotten just exactly maybe an hour, an hour and a half. I used to leave home at 6.30 in the morning. And in the wintertime, Mr. Razor didn't open school until 9 o'clock. He wasn't allowed to cut the uh, recitations uh, uh, more than five minutes. That made 40 minutes. You had to have 40 minutes for uh, uh, for a class, and we usually had 45. He cut them down to 40. He cut our recesses down to five minutes, our lunch hour down to half hour, and uh, that way he could open a little bit later and let us out a little bit later, uh, earlier, and. Uh, so we get out there and hitch up our horses, and there'd be a stampede out there, everybody trying to get hitched up and get out. How many people would you say attended the high school while you were there? Oh, there was less than 100. Less than 100. The first class that graduated was the, in 1915. The, uh, they were the second four-year class. Second. The first four-year class had just graduated when we entered in 1914. And uh, there was less than a hundred in the school. I don't think there was even. There may have been a hundred that uh, 19, uh, uh, 17 and eighteen. They may have been. There was a big bunch. There was about. I forgot how many there was. There's something like uh, getting up toward fifty kids in that one. They came in. We had so many, but before that, they'd come in and they'd be. There were 24 started with me. It was eight of that 24 that graduated. And that was the same way that all the classes, they'd drop out till there wouldn't be very many. Were there more boys than girls? Um, or about equally mixed? Uh, let's see. We had more boys, and we had more boys to graduate. I don't know if there was as many. I guess there was a few more girls. Um, most classes had more girls. Um, it's hard to say. Now, in, you actually graduated in what year? Eighteen. Nineteen eighteen. Yeah. And you you still attended McCracken County High School. It was called McCracken County High School. Is that right? Oh, yes, I went. Yes. My, my, and, and they called McCracken. I guess, yes, they did call McCracken County. When did they change it, you know? Well, that's what we can't be sure of. I don't know when we it was figured, changed. Roberta and I figured Sunday it was McCracken County High School until either Lone Oak, Oak or Reedland became a four year high school. I think mm -hmm. Lone Oak became one first, but we could check that out. Well, so then they had to then, change it mm -hmm. from McCracken okay. County. We think it was what, 1926 or 7, possibly? I don't know. I don't it know. was still McCracken County High School when you graduated, mm -hmm. wasn't it? In 25. In 25, right. I knew mm -hmm. that. We, we had talked about that, Mel and I had. Well, um, it was I'm always, well, of course, there wasn't any high schools. Uh, you know, where we lived, where Nell lives, uh, all clear down to the ca uh, county line. Mm -hmm. Those kids at Raglan, uh, until cars came along, it was impossible for them to go to school. And so you went to school in this three-story block-type yeah. building then? Yeah, yes. that one right there. And you still did too. That one is the building that remained until 1934, mm -hmm. five, something there. They tore it down and started the other building, and I think they occupied it in 1936. About that time. From what Charles Vance, and that's, I'm relying on him for that information. Well, I, I was down here in 1936, and they told me that uh, they were wrecking the high school, uh, the old building, and uh, I didn't go see it, and I felt, I felt sorry to see it go, 
but <laughs> there certainly wasn't room enough for what they have now. That's true. <laughs> That's true. Well, Roberta, tell about the provision for the horses. What you well, <laughs> so, uh, uh, so they had somewhere, somebody, I guess one by one, they had built stables. And when they, uh, it be, uh, when uh, Viola and I got ready to go, Mr. Harper and my dad went up there and built us one, uh, a stall for the horse, and then a place of uh, a shed for the buggy. And there was a, we went in the morning. We unhitched our horse and put it in the in the little stable. And then at noon we had to go back and feed him. And then then that that night we had to hitch him up. And everybody was out there hitching up, and everybody was trying to see who could get out first. <laughs> That's just the way the parking lot is now. <laughs> it hasn't changed a bit. <laughs> well, did you have to take provisions from time to time to feed the horse? I mean, you, did you keep yeah, them there we at took the our own, took your we own? we took our own stuff along, our mm -hmm. own corn. We did corn mostly. I, we didn't have, unless we were going to stay, we didn't necessarily have to take hay. Mm -hmm. That's a long time provision. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, uh, anyway, and then if we had to stay, one time it snowed. Uh, that last year I went, it was, uh, that was that's a year that had so much, so much snow. And we stayed up, with my, um, uh, Lyle and my brother and I stayed up there. Till, we stayed across the road there where Mr. Hill used to live. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, uh, so they took the horse over and put it in Mr. Hill's uh, stables. And of course, we didn't have, have any corn except for maybe one day or night. Anyhow, we didn't have enough. So Dad very carefully counted out and, and to pay Mr. Hill back for the corn that we used. <laughs> but uh, anyway, and uh, so uh, well, uh, anyhow, I had to go backwards a little bit, I guess. The people, how, how helpful they were. When the, it was a cold day, there wasn't any, there wasn't any snow, and the wind was cold. And uh, I came along up at Rosington, and I saw Miss Hyde coming down. She lived back off, and I saw her coming with something in her hands. It was almost dark, and it was cold. I was cold, and I had on enough clothes. It, it took me longer to get dressed when it was cold and undressed. And uh, so she, uh, she, I saw she wanted me to stop. And she had a thing, it looked like a carpet, one of them uh, old-fashioned carpet sweepers. She says, I saw you go, uh, I knew when you come by, you was going to be cold. You'd be nearly froze. And she said, I, this is a carriage heater. She had it was heated with charcoal, and she already had it hot. Well, I was already cold, and my hands was cold, and I wore galoshes, and uh, we didn't call them galoshes, and uh, lower shoes, and two coats, and a hat, and a scarf, and every and two pairs of gloves most of the time, and uh, then I had a lap robe. A heavy one, uh, all I could get with me. And, this, and uh, Mrs. Hyatt was a young woman with small children. And so I put, um, and my hands is cold, and so I put my, uh, I took my gloves off and got my hands warm, and uh, then I put that thing down under my feet. Well, when I got home, uh, somebody come out. They thought I'd be half frozen. And uh, yeah, I was nice and warm. <laughs> <laughs> you had been from Rosington anyway, hadn't you? <laughs> yeah. And I kept that till the weather got uh, moderated some.